Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We're on STV Edinburgh and STV Glasgow, Monday to Friday at half past six. The main talking points tonight, Scott Allen looks all set to be paraded as a Celtic player. Mark Warburton says he only wants players at Ibrox who want to play for Rangers. And Hearts prepare for their toughest test yet against Ross County, according to the Tyne Castle boss, Robbie Nielsen. That's just a few of the topics we'll be discussing on tonight's programme, all in the company of Alan Ruff and our bootroom guest I'm delighted to say former Rangers and Dundee United player John Daly joins us on the programme John uh, welcome players who declare their undying love for one team and then go and join another will Scott Allen have any problem whatsoever doing that? I don't think so um, it's hard to turn down a, an offer from a team like Celtic um, obviously Champions League football looks like it could be on the horizon as well so um, you know that's that's the pinnacle of a player's career is to go and play in that, and you know he's certainly he's certainly a top player, and I think he'd uh, he'd really add to that that side that they have there. You've probably got a good insight into him because you have watched him uh, in the opposition on more than a few occasions. How mm -hmm. good is he in your mind? Well, I actually played with him at Dundee United as well. Um, you know you could see you could see then even as a young lad before he went down south, he he um, he has all the attributes to go on and play at a really high level. Um, you know he has vision, um, and then he has the, the technical ability then to 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 back that up and, and play that pass and play that killer ball. And um, you know I think even last year you could see he he was the happy the the Hibs Hibs team, and um, you know I think he's a, he's a top player and. I think, like I said, he, he will go on and play at a, a much higher level than he's at now. Yeah, uh, Ruffy, uh, the deal itself looks as if Dylan McGeoch will get a permanent move. I think the argument at the moment is over the length of it. And Liam Henderson on loan. So in the end, uh, I think Alan Stubbs clarified the situation by saying it's not a case of I didn't want to sell him if the price was right. Scott Allen was going uh, to any other club other than the Championship your main contenders. Yeah, he said that right from the start. Uh, he obviously knows what D uh, Dylan can do. Uh, he's had him last year and he looked impressive in most of the games he played in. Liam Henderson uh, is a real quality player as well. Just can't get into the Celtic team. He's been out on loan a few times. But uh, as far as Scott Allen's concerned, as, as John will tell you, his whole life will change walking through that front door as it does with Rangers and mm -hmm. Celtic. It doesn't matter what club you've been at. You know, when you go to the big two, Everything that comes with it is, is a fantastic experience and I'm sure he'll, th he'll thrive in it. Yeah, I, I mean, from the, the big question after that is, is, will he play, John? I mean, some people are suggesting, you know, Celtic have got so many choices in the middle of the park. They have, but, you know, I think you, you look at the, if they do qualify for the Champions League, there's, there's a lot of competitions that they're going to be involved in and the manager, you can see that he, he likes to rotate the team and, you know, he's probably not going to play as often as he would play at Hibs, but... You know, I think he will play a big part in, in Celtic's success for the season. Talking about yourself, obviously there are a number of managers out there. There are uh, scouts looking at all the available players. Um, what are your hopes and ambitions? Short term, is it, do you still want to stay in Scotland? Do you still, would you consider a move elsewhere? Well, I've actually, um, you know, I've been looking abroad to go you know, a um, few few countries abroad, um, but at the moment I think it, it seems to be a non a non starter because I think a lot of clubs have um, the foreign allocated players and, and that type of thing. So I'm still waiting to hear back from one or two things. But at the moment it probably looks like you know the window that I really need to go in is the January window. So it might be it might be an idea then that I maybe sign a short term deal somewhere to to tide me over till then till I can maybe go on and, and do that because I'd like to go. Um, I'd like to go and experience something different, something outside Scotland, and um, if possible, you know, to, to try and sample a different style of football and maybe a different culture as well. Mm, but you wouldn't be against uh, if a club come in here and say to you, maybe give us one or two years? No, of course not. You, you obviously have to look at your your uh, what, what's on the table. You know, if you get an offer of that, it's it's hard to knock back. Um, you know, I still I still feel I've got got plenty of goals left in me and. Um, you know, and that's that's at whatever level I play at, I feel I'll score goals. And um, yeah, if a team came in and offered that, it's something that I'll have to seriously consider. Ruffy, I'll tell you one thing I wouldn't have uh, uh, been bothered with uh, last night was 
trolling around uh, on Twitter with the, the, the reaction to possibly Scott Allen uh, looking uh, to join Celtic instead of Rangers. But Mark Warburton today, concentrating on what the job he's got in hand, he's added the two Spurs players on loan. Um, so Ball and, uh, let me get this right, Dominic Ball and Nathan Odua uh, join from Spurs on loan. And he said he only wants players who want to play for Rangers there at Ibrox. Yeah, and quite rightly so. Obviously, if, if Scott decides that he's going to go to Celtic, you know, obviously Rangers pursued him. Uh, quite a lot to get him so obviously he doesn't want to go there uh, and he's quite right you know if there's players there that are bringing in who will be a new uh, horizon for them to, to go into the Rangers team and experience the 50,000 people there and it'll be a wonderful experience for anybody that gets in there but he's right in saying that you know Scott uh, although he did identify he wanted to go to Rangers there's no doubt about that but uh, isn't to be. Yeah, John Ruffy just mentioned there the crowd. I mean, the, on Friday night, there was 49,000 uh, plus Rangers mm -hmm. fans there, uh, there to see uh, this new look side. I mean, what was it like for you? Were you amazed at the club, the enormity of it, the size and, and the expectation when you got there? Yeah, well, you, you know it's a big club when you're on there, but like you said, when you, when you actually walk out in front of that crowd, it, it does hit you how big the club is and um, the massive support that's there. and. Um, you know, it's 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 what you want to do when you're a kid and when you want to be a footballer. That's that's the type of crowds that you want to play in front of. And you know, I was very fortunate to, to get that opportunity to do that. Yeah, you uh, would have had undoubtedly a number of United players uh, that you were friendly with uh, in those days in the long period you played for mm -hmm. uh, for United. But what about Rangers? Was there was a particular players you were close to that you fed off? I mean, everybody builds up friendships through life, especially in football. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I still have close friends from my United days, and um, you know, even like you said at Rangers, you know, there's you always get close to boys, and I think probably uh, Richard Foster and, and Nicky Law were probably the two that I were, were quite close to. Um, I think the fact that we came in at the same sort of time as well, you know, helped us sort of to gel together and. Um, obviously going really well. Yeah. What was the highlight for you? Was it a particular game or, or, or a season that you thought, I really like it, I've enjoyed it? Um, to be honest, I enjoyed the whole lot. Obviously last year was, was frustrating. Um, I didn't get as much game time as I would have, would have hoped, but um, still to be part of it and you know, training at Murray Park every day and you know, to be involved with the, the bunch of boys that were there and the staff that were there and, and the people about the club um, you know, are genuinely nice people. And, um, you know, it's a fantastic, fantastic club, and um, like I said, I enjoyed my whole two years there, even if I didn't play as much as I would have hoped in the last year. Yeah, uh, let's look to uh, the weekend fixtures. You can join us tomorrow on the program. It's uh, starting at two o'clock on STV Edinburgh and STV Glasgow. That's what we've got to look forward to. Uh, and of course, in the Premiership, there are a number of clubs, including one that I watched in midweek, Ruffy Hearts, heading up to Ross County. Uh, Robbie Nielsen reiterated today that this will be their toughest test yet, um, which in the cynical world of football means the other three games that they, they managed to win. Um, he was more than happy with how they controlled them. But nevertheless... Yeah. They got a good win against Motherwell. Uh, they're flying high. This could be, if they can win this match, uh, I think that will be their best start since I think George Burley was in, was in charge. Yeah, they have been impressive in the last three games, but I think he's, he's quite right. Uh, I think Ross County uh, are right... Uh good moment in the season, you know, I think they're playing well, I think uh, Jim McIntyre has got them playing good football, there's a lot of confidence, the boy Curran is scoring regularly as well, mm -hmm. so I think they go up there and I think Ross County will be a very hard place to come away with three points this year. Yeah, John, were you surprised that Hearts ran away with that, that division and are you surprised with their start this season? Um, I think I, I was surprised they ran away last year, I thought we would have run them a bit closer than we did, but you know, we never really applied any pressure to them to you know, to basically put them under pressure and, and see see how they reacted to that. Um, and, and now I'm not really surprised how, how well they've started. You know, they have they have a winning mentality, winning mentality and a you know that winning habit, which in football is you know you can't buy it. It's it's you know they're going into games feeling confident and knowing that they're they're going to get chances and, and they're going to stick them away. And 
um, to defend them well as well. So, you know, I think they've they've started well, and you know, like you said, Robbie's obviously come out and said this is his toughest game yet. But I'm sure he'll say the same again next week. You know, <laughs> <laughs> manager speak. Yeah, uh, Ruffy. The one thing I would say, we always try and say to fans, if you want to go and see a game, get out there. But uh, I think it might be tough to get a you know a ticket for Hearts this season, especially the away support. The home support was incredible uh, in midweek. Yeah, but I think the the Hearts support will be the same as Aberdeen, who deserve a pat in the back as well. They're away supporters are fantastic and it makes a difference when away supporters make the effort. I know it's quite a distance to travel but when you're in a stadium like Ross County and it's nearly full uh, it just makes it a wee bit better. Yep, absolutely. Uh, John Daly is our boot room guest. Uh, we'll talk more with John uh, about the Premiership games. We'll look into the Championship as well. Also, we've got the Barclays Premier League fixtures for tomorrow to look forward to. You can join us on the programme. Uh, we'll be here alongside uh, Alan Ruff, will be Gordon Smith, and of course, uh, Des McKeown will be joining us in the studio. We'll look towards all the games across uh, the main leagues, north and south of the border. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. Our boot room guest tonight, I'm delighted to say, is John Daly. Uh, the only thing I can sum it up by saying is he's an available striker, scores goals, one and three for United, one and two for Rangers. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and that, as per the terms of John's contract, <laughs> fulfills our complete obligation to him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> if you are uh, at this point looking for a, uh, you know, somebody who'll score goals at 32 years of age, Ruffy, I'm not going to blow his trumpet. You can do it for him. Yeah, as John said, you know, there, there are all different uh, styles of strikers, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, I tell you, the, the striker that I wouldn't want to play against would be John still. Yeah. You know, I think uh, most clubs should have a player like John. And when you threw the fixture list up there, there was at least three or four teams at the end of the season will be crying out for a goal scorer. And, and it could be the defining whether you stay up or don't stay up. So although they might have uh, what they think, their, their best striker available, you always need a backup. Well, let's look at uh, some of the other games as well. Uh, I mean, Celtic, the, the PR for them this weekend will be easy enough, but they've got a home match against Inverness Cali Thistle. John Hughes's uh, team haven't got a great record in the last four there at Celtic Park. No, they haven't. And uh, <laughs> again, we keep harping back, not just because John's here. You know, they lost the boy Watkins, they lost Mackay, haven't replaced them. You know, and uh, I think that's where they're going to struggle this year. Uh, they're a great football inside. They were a joy to watch uh, last year, obviously with the cup and everything. But I think John uh, will need to bring in two or three players and, and certainly going to Parkhead tomorrow in the form that they're in. It could be a long day. Yeah, one of the best games uh, that I've witnessed since the start of the season. Not been too many on show, I would accept that. But uh, the Dundee Derby, John, I thoroughly mm -hmm. enjoyed watching it. Yeah, no, I, I was there. I was there watching it and... Um, you know, credit to Dundee, I thought they started the game at a super pace and, you know, probably should have been at least two goals up at half time and, you know, I was sure Paul Hartley was scratching his head at half time wondering how he's not in the lead. Um, but then obviously, you know, it came out second half, gone down the hill, um, again, started really well and, and got two goals in front and you think that they're going to they're gonna take the game, but again, Dundee came back and... You know, I think the game had it all. You know, they they, they got the last minute equaliser, which was uh, obviously great for Dundee and not so great for Dundee United. You're training with uh, Dundee United at the moment. Um, Blair Spittle, give us your mm -hmm. assessment. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of many young, talented boys that are there at the moment, and um, yeah, I'm in training with them, and you know, it's it's a joy to be around these young lads, the quality players, and. Uh, very fortunate that I can use the facilities and, and, and play with play with these lads. Um, you know, they're like I said, Blair, Blair is is one of those players that you know he he can do he can do things that are unexpected. And um, there's a few other boys as well there that you know have really caught my eye since I've been in training with them. Before we move on to there, you know, I think we have to congratulate whoever it is that dropped the Paul Hartley ban uh, for over celebrating at the game. Yeah. I mean, common sense yeah. prevailed. Uh, thank heavens, but it just shows you that uh, the pressure that the referees are on to make these kind of decisions. I think somebody really needs to have a word with them and say, look, let's ease up a bit. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, as you know, Ruffy and I are uh, big fans of people running right down the touchline and jumping on all the players' heads <laughs> <laughs> because the goal scored. 
It's as simple as that. He still, we still like a noise up, John. I don't know about yourself. Yeah, if you score yeah. a goal, you want to celebrate. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think there's too many uh, restrictions on on when you score. You know, you, you, you kind of. I think Blair Spittle when he scored the first, he jumped over the barrier. And I don't know whether he got booked for that or not. <laughs> but I think the second one, he was going to do it again. But I think he thought twice about it. You know. Yeah, uh, we need more of that in the game. Uh, sensible stuff, but still enjoyable, uh, nonetheless. Um, elsewhere, Motherwell against Aberdeen. Um, I, I still, you know, I don't want to harp on about Motherwell will probably try and get into a groove, uh, Ruffy, but uh, they haven't got into it right now and I'm, I'm I'm still not happy with where Scott McDonald's playing. They need goals. Yeah, they need goals as well, there's no doubt about that. But I, I thought against Dundee United, I thought they'd created a few chances. Uh, I think they were unfortunate not to get them and it, it might be the case for them, they really need to score first. But uh, at this moment in time, Aberdeen just seem to be grinding out results away from home and that's a good sign for them. Yeah, absolutely. And Thistle against Killy, can we, I mean, have you got Killy down to be relegated, Ruffy? Uh, I've got them down there, yeah, no, I've yeah. got uh, them in the, the, the bottom four. But uh, you're right, again, tomorrow I think uh, goal scoring has been a problem again for both of them. But uh, I think we might be surprised tomorrow. I think there could be goals in that one. OK, yeah, it's got nil-nil written all over it now, folks, since <laughs> Ruffy's given it that. Patrick Thistle haven't scored a goal in four games. That's all I'm saying. I know Alan Archibald will be pinning every newspaper up on the wall to try and stimulate them. But uh, that's how it looks in the Premiership. Let's look at the prediction draw. Um, I'm not going to ask John for who he thinks is going to be relegated or in the playoffs or even who's going to win the league because he might sign for them shortly. So I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to ruin any move whatsoever. Anywhere. Um, let's look at our predictions, Ruffy, uh, and see uh, how we're faring on this one. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. We're going to hold our hands up. we got our fingers burnt with the uh, Kilmarnock yes, score. Yes, we did. Um, Some of us are uh, burnt than others. Yes, absolutely. I, don't worry, I got absolute pelters <laughs> off a few people for suggesting Celtic could win that one 4-1. Uh, so, uh, have we differed on anything? I think we are fairly similar, Ruffy. Uh, you've got Thistle to win. I've got a draw there. And uh, you've got Ross County to beat Hearts by two goals to one. Um, OK, OK, John, <laughs> just uh, if you were... I don't want to try and influence you if you were veering towards any set of scores there. Is there one that sticks out you think's just not going to happen? Um, I think the Ross County Hearts one will be, yeah, it'll be tight, but I think I can see Hearts nicking that one, to be honest. Um, maybe 2 1 Hearts. Yeah, OK, there you are, Ruffy. That's all I'm saying to you. Um, now, let's delve into that championship because um, Hibs, despite it all, have to get back to winning ways, Ruffy. Your boys slipped up against them, Barton. Yeah, they did. Uh, and, and we spoke about it. Uh, all day uh, as it was happening and uh, the thing that was coming through was you, when, you, when you're going to be challenging Rangers you need a positive start and that just definitely wasn't the result that they wanted so you're right but it happened too many times last year with Hibs you know the, these kind of results and then what happened when you get a result like that puts you in pressure on the next one yeah. you know the supporters are going there and going is that it again this year so it means that Pressures on the players as well, uh, so, but I'm sure Alan Stubbs will have them uh, wound up for that one. But they they can't afford too many results at last week's. Yeah, John, uh, for a man who's signed for Rangers, um, you'll know more than most about the the psychology of you must win every week. You mm -hmm. know, and at times, you, you know, you must win and entertain. Um, yeah. And Hibs have got good players, but sometimes I think the, the next step is thinking, you know, we've got to win, we've got to grind out results. Yeah, of course. I think you, you, you hit the nail on the head there. You know, I think a lot of time at Rangers when we did win, sometimes it wasn't good enough. Um, you know, you, you have to entertain the fans as well. And you know, I think um, for Hibs at the moment, they just need to try and try and get that first win on the board in the league. And and if it is, you know, one nil grinded out victory, then then so be it. It gets them on the board. But um, as Ruffy said, it's you know, it's a poor start for them, and they need to they need to bounce back fairly fairly sharpish. Yep, against Jim Duffy's men, are you tipping them to get the result there, just so I can phone Jim tonight, Ruffy? No, I think I think uh, Morton will go there with a lot of confidence, obviously, in the back of that Dumbarton result. The players will believe maybe they could get something out of it. But the, the basic thing is Hibs, you know, it's uh, their players have to perform and they ha if they're going to win games, they have to win them comfortably. We've been there too many times last year when they were winning comfortably, but losing something late on. Yeah, just before we finish here, Spalkert Ray Rovers is a tasty game and so is St Mirren against Dumbarton. Steve Aitken surprised us all last week uh, with the performance of his team, but they come up against the St Mirren that I really do think 
have to go through it. I was impressed by Paul McMullen. He certainly stood out in that side. Um, but I think they need to try and find their feet in this division. Yeah, I think John will tell you there's nothing better when you start off a season. You know, if you could get two or three wins under your belt, you know, it just makes the dressing room a happier place to be in Monday to Friday. And you go into the games on the Saturday with a lot of confidence. So I think the teams that we're talking about really do have to put a string of wins together. Yep. Just before we go, John Daly, last word for you on this one. Uh, you've been training with the Dundee United boys. Um, is there a good pre-season in you? Is the fitness there? Are you ready to go if somebody just said, I need you this weekend? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, like I said, I've been training hard and training with the boys, and then the days I've not been, I've been doing my own stuff. So, um, you know, I'm sure the match sharpness probably needs a game or two, but I'm feeling good and feeling fit and ready to go. Uh, excellent. Listen, John, from everybody on the show, we wish you the very best. Uh, don't forget, if you want to sign John, Ruffy and me are available to take the call <laughs> and do the deal as well. <laughs> <laughs> we do hope that he gets a club, John, whether it's here or abroad. Uh, you go with our very best wishes. Uh, John Daly, our boot room guest. If you'd like to join us tomorrow on the programme, you can because it's four hours looking at uh, the Premiership, Championship, League One and League Two in Scotland. Uh, we'll be able to check those predictions and uh, see how we're faring tomorrow on that. We'll also look at the Barclays Premier League as well. Aston Villa against Manchester United tonight. Can Van Hal continue after that win over Spurs with a win over Tim Sherwood's Villa. We'll ask those questions, we'll get them all answered uh, and reflect on them on tomorrow's programme as well. Stay with us, STV Edinburgh, STV Glasgow, uh, with a bit of luck from two o'clock in the afternoon. You can join Alan Ruff, Gordon Smith and Des McEwen. They'll all be there in the pundits' chairs uh, giving you the best. Thanks for watching.